So Jordan Peterson just had an interview on Pierce Morgan and Sensei. First started with Pierce Morgan and Jordan Peterson having moral quandaries. But I, I'm wrestling with a lot of moral quandaries about this war. And I'm hoping that through our conversation today, we might get to at least have some clarity about the moral quandaries and see. Do you feel any moral quandaries about it? Well, I don't think you can have a war without moral quandary. Oh, yeah, well, there's just moral quandaries everywhere there. It's a minefield. Tough word, you know, tough word. The way the issue is framed throughout this interview and in the mainstream media, the language that is being used. First of all, the very first thing you will notice is this is framed as a war, Israel and Hamas war, that this, this is a warfare between two sovereign nations and the military. But the reality is this is complete and utter genocide and ethnic cleansing of the Palestinian people who have been, who have been pushed into the Gaza Strip and have been blockaded there for about 60 to 17 years now. You know, those people are refugees and the children of refugees in the Gaza Strip. And now it is time for them to be decimated, genocided and ethnically cleansed as were their forefathers from other parts of Palestine, which is now called Israel. So this is not a warfare. This is not an equal warfare between two sovereign nations. So that's the first way that this interview and most of the mainstream narrative is framed. Another way that you will see the language being used in the mainstream narrative and in this interview specifically is that the Palestinian protests are not called protest for Palestine. They are called Hamas protest as if the people of the Western nation and across the globe are protesting for the sake of Hamas. There is no Hamas protest that I am aware of. All the protests are in the Palestinian flag and for the people of Palestine. All the world's sympathy is for the people of Palestine. The way this interview is framed, the language that is being used, first of all, I would like to discuss, is very racist and Islamophobic. And it is undermining the plight of the Palestinian people, the suffering that the people of Gaza are suffering right now at the hands of the IDF racist Islamophobes and the Israeli apartheid nation. And people like Pierce Morgan and Jordan Peterson are refusing to condemn it and call it a moral quandary, that this is a warfare of moral quandaries with both sides having just cause. This is a thing that was uh, discussed in the interview. So you could argue that both sides have a just cause here. Mm -hmm. And he said that as a leading Jewish commentator, that historically, both sides have a just cause. Historically, Pierce Morgan specifically said, historically, both sides have a just cause, which is a complete and utter lie. Israel, what Zionists are, are the Jewish people who were uh, kicked out of Europe penniless and they lived among the Ottomans. And those Jewish people, starting from Theodor Herzl, Zionists, they were not really religious specifically, not, not all Jews are aligned with the Zionist movement. So they were deciding on a land for the Jews in an era of nationalism and they were deciding on, deciding on whether Argentina or Palestine to be the land of the Jews and they ended up, they ended up choosing Palestine. Eventually settling there, colonizing that nation, you know, uh, there's a whole history about it. I would recommend, you know, Ilan Pape, uh, a Jewish person writing the history of Palestine's plight. Walid Khalidi, Rashid Khalidi, the Palestinian people suffered for 100 years now, uh, massacres, rape, genocide, holds an event called Nakba and Tantura, eventually being pushed to Gaza and the West Bank, all of them refugees, all of them living in refugee camps, and the descendants of refugees today that are now suffering this. Historically, Israel, the terrorist nation, the Zionists specifically, are the aggressors, and the Palestinian people are the oppressed. Jordan Peterson, instead of condemning Israel, chose to blame Iran, that Iran are the puppeteers, they are the ones who are causing all of this trouble, that they are the ones who refused to have the Arab states sign the Abraham Accords, and he puts it, the, it like this, Abraham Peace Accords, whereas what the Abraham Accords are, are normalization of the Arab states' relationship with Israel, while the Philistine 
Palestinian people still suffer. They will not end the Palestinian plight. They will not give them back their land. They will not remove the blockade that has been uh, the Palestinian people have suffered in Gaza and West Bank for 16 to 17 years now. So the Abraham Accords that Jordan Peterson is propagating that this will bring peace in the Middle East. This will never bring peace on the Palestinian people that have been pushed into Gaza, pushed into the West Bank and blockaded and barred from the outside world. Now when the tweet was brought up where he told Netanyahu that uh, give the Palestinian people hell. On October the 7th you tweeted give them hell Netanyahu enough yep. is enough and you got some blowback for that as everybody yeah, who lot. says anything about this. Were you yeah. surprised by the scale of the blowback? Do you wish you'd phrase that tweet differently? Do you have any regrets about well, it? Well, you know Twitter is a very complicated social media platform and it's been difficult for me to learn how to use it. You know, I was upset because I had developed somewhat of a Muslim following um, on YouTube and I was very happy about that. A lot of people on the Islamic side of the world were watching my biblical lectures for example and you know and I've had extensive conversations with Muslims on my YouTube channel and you know I burnt some of that up and I'm not sure I did that well, I, I would say I'm certain I didn't do that in the most productive manner. Hmm. And so, do I regret it? It would have been better to do the long form, to, to have done the long form to begin with, you know? He, instead of regretting all those lives lost in Palestine, in Gaza, in, in Gaza uh, that are still being lost, he regrets that he burned his Muslim following. He regrets he burned his relationships with his customers. That's what this racist Islamophobe regrets over Muslim lives lost. What the Muslims should do is boycott him, completely abandon his subscriptions and his customer services, all his books, and the only interaction have with him is that of rebuke. Another outrageous thing in this interview that they were discussing is that the suffering of the Palestinian people is just you know uh, that the Jewish people are causing this suffering. It's just a you know a myth he tried to portray it as a myth, whereas these are historical facts which I have described the Nakaba, the Tentura, Plan Dalet, the Stern Gang, all of it recorded by both Jewish and Muslim historians. There's a whole documentary by uh, Teddy Katz called the Tentura. Watch the documentary how the terrorist IDF and destroyed Palestinian lives massacred them, destroyed villages, genocided, ethnic cleansing, rape of Palestinian women with no remorse, with no regret, no apologies, nothing. And the way he portrayed it as that Palestinian people have a responsibility for the suffering they are enduring. It's like, well, if your government is a totalitarian band of armed criminal thugs, what responsibility do you bear for that as as the subjected people. Things are slipping and sliding in all sorts of pathological directions and people are letting it happen. And if you let that happen long enough, well, things get very, very bad. And they have got very, very bad in Palestine. And the answer to whatever tyranny Israel might be exerting over the Palestinians isn't for the Palestinians to exert even more tyranny over themselves, especially not in concert with a third party like Iran, who's perfectly willing to sacrifice them at any point. And so now, and then that question emerges, well, what responsibility do the Palestinians bear? Well, then I think we start to touch on more metaphysical issues. It's like, well, the Palestinians, like all people, bear the responsibility to live in truth and to stand up to tyranny in their, in their deeds, their attention and their deeds and their actions. Because if you don't, you pay for that, and so do your children. Right, and then so do your grandchildren, and so do your great grandchildren. And you know, there seems to be something unjust in that, in that why did the children suffer? And the biblical answer to that has always been, well, the children suffer for the sins of their forefathers. And you might think, well, it's pretty unfair that the world is set up that way. It's like, hey, it might be unfair, but it is set up that way, and it does beg the question. What responsibility do the people who are living under the thumb of totalitarians have for the fact that they're living under the thumb of totalitarians? And the answer isn't none. That's how he put it as that the oppressor and oppressed narrative is a very shallow one, that the oppressed is not always morally virtuous. Students mm -hmm. who beamed pro-Hamas rhetoric onto the building at George Washington University, 
they haven't lost their places at that university. Mm -hmm. So even for the most heinous possible thing that you could do, which might warrant cancellation, the people who've driven cancel culture spare themselves. Well, this shows you how shallow the oppressor, oppress, oppression, oppressor narrative really is, oppressed oppressor narrative really is. The notion is we can view all human social relations and the past itself through a meta-Marxist narrative that proclaims that there are only oppressors and victims and that all you have to do to be moral is to be on the side of the victim. Now, that's the standard narrative that's being taught on university campuses, and the Palestinians play the role of victim. And so you can't argue against the Palestinian cause without simultaneously having to face the weight of every single person who's adopted the oppressor-oppressed narrative, upending that. Eight they're in now, there's no way that's going to fly. And so, and so we see exactly what happened. The, the narrative's already in place. All oppressed people are innocent and virtuous victims. Well, so then when something like this happens and you see the Palestinian victims rise up against their evil Jewish overlords, then it's time for celebration. Say that to the African people who his forefathers enslaved and brought to America and subjugated them for a very long time. Only recently, in the 70s or 60s, were they emancipated completely, given equal rights to the white people. And even now, they are subject to racism. And they are still in America, in the West, suffering from poverty and lack of equality on an economic level. Say that to the Aboriginals, that not all oppressed people are virtuous. Say that to the Native Americans, Aboriginals. Say that to the people of Iraq, of Vietnam, of Hiroshima, who were nuked that not all oppressed people are virtuous, that just, just because a military force is winning, it makes the oppressed people seem more morally upright. Say that to those, all those victims of Western racism and Western supremacy, Western supremacists, white supremacists like Jordan Peterson. Then the discussion devolved to them discussing freedom of speech and social media. Now the contradiction and hypocrisy is very blatant and the silence on it is unnerving. That first they start the discussion by freedom of speech that you can say whatever you want but I have the right to block you and not have to listen to what you have to say. But then they discuss that social media, one of the negative outcomes it has is that it's unregulated and it needs a governance, it needs walls. And Pierce Morgan actually explicitly says this, that all those dead babies that are, you know, and those viral videos of dead babies, which by the way, he did not state which babies, you know, Palestinian or Jewish babies. He's a, the Islamophobe did not mention that. Those were Palestinian dead babies that you and I both know are being shown. So on, so on Twitter specifically, you will see many videos of Palestinian babies dead being uh, pulled from the rubble. You know, a whole building collapsed on a lady that, uh, people are trying to take out refugee camps bombed, hospitals bombed, ambulances bombed by the IDF. Give them hell, Jordan Peterson said, and they did receive hell. They were lamenting that the mainstream narrative has lost its power, which Pierce Morgan, to quote Pierce Morgan, in his days they were safe from these kinds of harsh realities that you, that occur outside the pampered world that the Western people live in. And the mainstream narrative had the power. That's that's the reality. Mainstream narrative have had more power, and they could just propagate whatever they want, hate mongering, war mongering, dehumanizing other people. They could do it all they wanted. Now they are failing, and that's that's all they lament. Jordan Peterson and Pierce Morgan. That's all they are lamenting in the interview, in this section that they cannot control the narrative anymore. The social media is now taken power from the mainstream narrative and is showing people the realities of the of suffering and the plight of Palestinian Muslims. Jordan Peterson burned his relationships with the Muslims and if this interview, interview did not help his cause but it worsened his relationship with us. To Muslims, we should completely and utterly boycott Jordan Peterson, remove his subscriptions, everything. We should have nothing to do with him. We need to be more active on social media to help the Palestinian people. Subscribe and like this video for the algorithm so that more people can see this video.